Welcome back. Yo, what's up? Welcome back. We are, uh, we're back. This is a special, well, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Marcus Flowers, aka One Marcus Flowers, aka Call Me What You Want, Just Don't Call Me Lazy. And I am here with, you know who it is, Morgan Flowers, at Metro Meta, the Oracle. Y'all know what's going on. And this is volume two, episode seven of the Super Flow Bro podcast. And you're in, a, you're in for a real treat today because uh, it's basically a special edition because we are recording on a Friday. We normally record on Saturday just to give you guys a little bit of insight. But we're going to jump into why on the front porch. So uh, front porch, let's talk about uh, Hurricane Florence. Uh, Morgan, you're, yes. in, you're, you're in North Carolina right now. Tell us a little bit. How is it going down there? I mean, I'm in Greensboro, North Carolina. So uh, it's actually been pretty chill most of the week. Like, my school canceled classes, I believe it was Tuesday. They canceled it from 12 o'clock Wednesday on just out of fear. And everybody left. But, like, it's been, like, super sunny and nice until today. It got really cloudy and really windy. So it's about to hit the city, I think, tonight. Do you think it's going to rain pretty hard out there? It, yeah, it does tend to rain a lot out here. So, does it uh what are the like predictions for it or how did you like prepare and stuff like that? I mean, for me preparing, I just like set some food and some stuff aside and uh I make sure my battery packs and my phone are all charged up. But uh yeah, other people just like I heard like Walmart got like like they didn't like rob it. They got like ransacked. Like everybody went in there, they grabbed like all the water, all the food. Like everybody's just like we scared, we're scared yeah. you know, like, down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That definitely uh I went to college in South Carolina at Claflin and a lot of my uh Facebook friends from that area did the same thing. Yeah, they they just shut it down. They shut it down. Yeah, all right, now moving on. So Paul Manafort. It may be about that time. He's about to crack under pressure. Uh, Go snitch. Go snitch. <laughs> yeah, so basically, uh, Paul Manafort uh, basically pled guilty, and part of his guilty plea is he will be working with the uh, Robert Mueller investigation. And uh, this is big. I wouldn't say it's impeachment. It's not impeachment. I don't think Trump's going to get impeached just because um, that's not how... Um, that's just not how this Republican Party is built. They're not going to impeach their uh, their guy because they just won't. But uh, this is very interesting because um, the tone is kind of shifted because for months it's been uh, Trump covering. Not I don't want to say covering, but he's been trying to portray Manafort as this great guy, as a as a man of the country who shouldn't be uh, who shouldn't be on trial. But because he pleaded guilty, it seems like it's the exact opposite. Yeah, it, it's 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 sad. I mean, but at the same time, we knew this. We knew that Trump was in with some sketchy people. Yeah, and uh, he's known Manafort for a long time. So this uh, Manafort cooperating with the uh, Trump with the not the Trump administration, but with the Mueller investigation is uh, is very. Uh, I don't want to say critical, but it's very. Um, it's monumental. Hurtful. It's monumental. It does hurt Trump in a long run. Well, I don't want to say it hurts Trump just because I feel it like... It might not hurt him like, yeah. politically, but it's definitely going to hurt him physically. You, we're definitely going to see a more erotic Trump, you know? Between like this and the uh, op-ed that came out a couple days ago about that guy saying he's part of the resistance in the White House... You, I can definitely get the feeling in the next couple of months to years we're going to see a Trump who doesn't trust anybody, and who is going to be more erratic and crazy. Yeah, and with that uh, New York Times op-ed piece, that was kind of, 
I do want to say that's cowardice just because uh, it's anonymous. So it's just like you put out this scathing op-ed, but at the same time, you're still going to work for a person whose policies you know you don't agree with because in the op-ed you said like you hid uh, documents from his desk just to get him distracted and other things of that nature. So it's just like if you're doing all of this to uh, protect the nation, why don't you stand up and just say, yo, I don't agree and just leave? Well, and then it goes down to the other problem you were talking about earlier where you said the Republican Party isn't going to <coughs> Like, if somebody does stand up and say, hey, this president is awful, he's not he's not good, like, nothing's going to change. Everybody's it's just going to be, like, the talk of the town on late night, and then they're going to get fired. It's going to be the talk of the town again, and then that's the end of it. Like, at this point, I know it doesn't sound comforting, but a secret organization inside the White House working to make sure Trump doesn't do anything is arguably the safest way we can keep this country safe. It's like the only way we don't blow everything up all the time. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with that. But at the same time, like we shouldn't it shouldn't have to come to this just like as a United States democracy, we shouldn't have had to. Uh, Put, we shouldn't we shouldn't have to have secret sales to make sure that the American people are good. And it's just like the people who are I quote unquote part of the resistance in the Trump White House, it's just like you're not part of the resistance because at the end of the day you're just adding towards the problem. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. All right. But yeah, so from one person hurting the nation, we're going to another person who's hurting women well who i don't want to say hurting women per se but let's just go to the kardashian clan now before we get into this uh before we get into this the kardashians are i don't want to they i will i will give them credit they are the first i'll say they were the first influencers before social media influencers were really uh really a thing they um they put the, they put everybody on the latest brands, latest trends, uh, what was hot, what was not hot. Well, what I would say is that internet influencers and influencers online have always been there, and they've been, like, fairly popular, but nobody ever really thought about it like that. Like, the Kardashians really opened up the world to say, oh, snap, these are, these are important individuals who are really capable of changing the way things flow and the way things work. It may have a lot of influence over people because before what brands would do is they would publish through content. So you had things like soap operas and stuff. And, um, but afterwards you had uh, differences between uh, not just now, not just trying to advertise through content, but trying to advertise through actual advertising and through people. Which is a very different, different ball game entirely. Yeah, but anyway, so the Kardashian, so Kim Kardashian keeps causing beauty problems. Uh, let me read the uh, oh wrong link. Um, okay, so the New Mexico Department of Health is recommending that customers who have been to one particular spa in Albuquerque, New Mexico, get tested for HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. And um, health officials are urging patients who got the vampire facial at New Mexico Spa to get tested for HIV. And a vampire facial is uh, something that uh, Kim Kardashian made popular. Yeah. I, I don't know exactly. Does it say what a vampire facial is exactly? Uh, I'm trying to look for something right now. I do not see it exactly, but um, yeah. let me see here. See, the main problem with like all of Kim Kardashian's like fashion stuff is that she one she has a lot of money, so she's doing a lot, a lot of crazy stuff. But two, she seems to be into a lot of crazy, more like outgoing stuff. Like if you remember. I think it was, like, a couple weeks ago, she was part of that, like, body modification, like, fashion show, and she was, like, showing it off and everything, and right now, that looks cute, but, like, if you looked at the stuff, it looked like something out of Cyberpunk 2077, like, 
everybody thinks the first person to get people to put chips in their brain and do all that stuff is going to be like Apple or Google trying to get your information. It's probably going to be Kim Kardashian selling you some lipstick that makes your phone light up or something like that. Like, it's crazy how much influence she has and how little regard she seems to have for the dangers she puts people through who try to follow in her path. Yeah, and so basically what the vampire uh, mask is, is basically shaving some of your skin off of your face, which is why it's called the vampire, because you're going to bleed. Oh, gosh, that that is... Don't do that. People, please don't do that. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, so basically, a lot, of, along with a lot of other things, don't follow the Kardashians if you don't have Kardashian money. All right, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so from one part of Hollywood to the other part of Hollywood, it seems like Marvel Disney is trying to keep their neck on a competition. They are trying to push Black Panther to become uh, to get a grant to get an Oscar, and uh, they basically this is very exciting because Black Panther and superhero shows in general. Well, genre in general doesn't get, like, Oscars or stuff like that. And they tend to be, like, left off to the side, and they might get, like, a mention or something. They might get technical awards, but they don't get, like, best picture or stuff like that. That's usually reserved for, like, high dramas and stuff like that. But yeah, this year, thanks I to will. the backlash the Oscar had and them hiring or adding in all these younger actors, it seems like Disney's trying to double down and use this and as take advantage to push but black i will panther. i will say uh i will say i i you know i kind of don't think black panther deserves an oscar just because yeah, yeah it's a it's a good movie like i get i get the importance for black america but at the same time like it wasn't like it wasn't a type of movie that i would see more than once just because like it's good it's great but there was like a lot of plot holes in it there was a lot of like lines that didn't make sense. Uh, the acting was great. Uh, the main character was very uh, dismal. Um, it's just it wasn't something I would go back to. And this has been like an extremely packed year for just great movies. Like if we're gonna give like blockbusters movies something like uh, a Quiet Place uh, by John Krasinski, that was really good. Uh, Black Klansman, uh, Sorry to Bother You. There's just a lot of films that I would give that I feel like deserves Oscars before Black Panther. Yeah, and I get that, but the problem is you're trying to get the Academy to nominate a genre film, something that is usually out of their wheelhouse. Like, Black Klansman, that's a Quentin Tarantino, like, Samuel Jackson movie. It's going to be talked about at the Oscars. A Quiet Place is the introspective, quiet horror made by a white man it's going to be talked about at the office see but i, I i'll, I'll push back I, hey, like hey, i'll push back because something because horror films don't usually get oscar nominations and the quiet place was so excellent because uh just from the cinematic point of view it was just uh it was just an excellent film to see and uh we saw different aspects of it and we um it's just like the way it was shot, the way it was directed, even the acting was just uh, on another level. So I do, I would push back on that. Yeah, but like a movie like A Quiet Place with such an interesting like theme like that, it's going to get an Oscar. Get Out was mentioned in the Oscars because of that sort of, because it has that same introspective, interesting story type things. Like, Horror is not always going to be in there, but when they make really good horror, it will be in there. Yeah, I guess we just, uh, I guess we just got to agree to disagree here. Uh, I don't think Black Panther deserves an Oscar, but you do. Yeah, it's Black Panther is if you're going to try to make superhero movies into the Oscars, and you're going to try to put them in there. Black Panther is the best movie to put in there because it's clear, it's concise, it doesn't have all the, as much of the MCU, like, mess that all the other ones have. Like, Infinity War might be a great movie, but there's no way you're going to get that into the Oscars. There's no way you're going to convince the Oscars 
to nominate a movie about a million different characters, some of which they might not know, that you have to watch several other movies just to get the concept of it, and that isn't even finished yet. Like, they're not going to go for that movie. Strange might have been good, but that movie was, like, pretty basic. You need something that's going to have hype behind it and that will be pushed, but is also a good movie and a good representation of the superhero genre. All right, cool. So now we're hopping out of the front porch. We're going in the living room. I'm going to have you kick it off, Morgan, since you are such a big Apple fan. And talk about the new iPhone. Well, Apple announced their new iPhones. That's that's pretty much it at this point. Like, really, the problem I have with Apple is that they don't do anything, like, innovative or new. Everything that Apple does is either already been done by Android or isn't an innovation. It's just more of a pain. Like, now they're, get, now they're getting rid of dongles. You're not going to get a dongle with your phone anymore. And that's just, first of all, it's upsetting that they got rid of it in the first place. It's upsetting that people have to decide, am I going to charge my phone or listen to music? We live in 2018. People, not everybody has Bluetooth devices. Not everybody well, has money I will for say, that. I will say, if it's 2018, if you're still using wired headphones please don't talk to me wired headphones are cheaper and some of them are better and like when you talk about like better uh 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 let's 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 chill out it's not better it doesn't have a delay on it when you're talking bluetooth about bluetooth headphones like, don't have a delay you have bluetooth yes, head they, do. they don't have a delay Marcus, you don't notice the delay because all you do is listen to music. Bluetooth headphones have a delay. I also all listen to podcasts on my uh, Apple Pods, on my on my Air AirBuds, AirPods. Marcus, it does I want not... you to do an experiment. Try and connect your AirBuds to a PS4 and try and play a game through the Bluetooth headphones, and you're going to notice that there's a delay between when something happens on screen and when you hear it. That's See, that, but that's a that's a that's a problem because I don't listen to the game uh, sounds anyway, so I don't really care. We already have captions, so I don't need to listen to uh, the sounds you, of the game. Games use audio cues so that you know what's going on. Uh, there's visual stuff too, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't really. Uh, I wasn't really too hyped about the new uh, iPhone, just because I got one last November, and so it's a it's an iPhone eight plus, and I'm happy with it. Um, I don't really like the bigger, like a bigger screen, just because um, it's gonna be like I don't want to say it's gonna be difficult to carry because you know I'm gonna probably eventually I'm gonna eventually get it, but it's just like right now I don't. It's like. Just for myself personally, we're at a weird space when it comes to like Apple products and how like you always have to have an Apple product to feel like you fit in. And it's just like I've had Apple for about, I want to say about like 10, I was going on like 10 years because I had like an iPod. I like the classic iPod. I had the iPod Nano. I, um, I went to a Blackberry. Then I went to... Then I went back to iPhone. Then I had an Android. Then I went back to iPhone. And so I've been pretty consistent with uh, just having Apple products. And it's not its not that I don't like Android products. It's just that Apple products, like uh, my work laptop is a, is an Apple. My personal laptop is an Apple. And so like having the same cloud on your work and your personal, uh, it just makes it easier. And so... Like, I'm sure, like it's it'd probably be fine for me to change, but it's like at this point, I'm I feel like I'm so deep that I probably won't get another type of phone. But um, that's just how it. That's just how I am. Just how it is. Like I don't want to say I don't like change, but when something's good, don't break it. Yeah, and and that's part of what Apple's plan is: is they get you in their infrastructure. And then you add everything to that infrastructure, and now you can't leave. Yeah. That that that's how like that's how Apple works. Like, I've never had an Apple. 
uh, phone, honestly. I, I've had all Android my life, and I, I love it. And I couldn't go to Apple now because so much of my stuff is wrapped up in, like, Google and uh, in Microsoft. Yeah, no, that's uh, that'd be dope completely. All right, so Apple is a trillion-dollar company. Let's go talk about a billion-dollar company. Now, a few, I want to say about a week or so ago now, Nike uh, announced a new partnership with uh, Colin Kaepernick to be the face of their 30th anniversary. And um, let me let me just read some of the stats. Nike stock closes at $83.47, an all-time high for the company. So that just shows to prove that when you bet on when you bet on social, I don't want to say social, but when you bet on black, you're going to get, you're going to make it. That's it. That's basically it. When you bet on black, you're going to make it. Um, and so uh, Nike spent an estimated $5 million on the advertising that Kaepernick just do it commercial overall. And the returning approach is $300 million. Like that is insane. And it's literally only been seven days. And now, and they have, haven't even released any of the Kaepernick stuff. It's well, just been the advertisement. And let me tell you, Kaepernick does his own merchandise as well. He released a he released a jersey, and it sold out like immediately. I was going to, I saw him when he posted it, and I was like, I'll come back later and get it. But when I went back, it was completely sold out. So it just shows um, the type of power and type of influence that he has as a um, as an activist now. And there's been some concern about Kaepernick working with uh, Nike and how he puts it together as, um, you know, how like there's like this sad notion that you have to be poor to be an activist. And it shouldn't be like that. You should always be able to get your money. Even the uh, March on Washington that was sponsored by Coca-Cola. It wasn't the government saying, hey. Uh, you have you have all these people who are gonna provide security. No, that was Coca Cola taking a risk on Dr. Martin Luther King at the time, saying, and their their thought process was, if we're on the right side of history now, we'll be looked at favorably, which uh, in turn did happen. And also with Nike, Nike has never been afraid to go against to go against the grain. Nike, like if you remember, night when Nike started, they were the they were the rebellion. They weren't this billion dollar company. They were going against the grain. When they put uh, Michael Jordan as the face of their basketball brand, that they did that at an at a unpopular time because at the time it was unpopular to put, to place a black man on, um, just to be your poster. Like that was unheard of at the time. So Nike has never been afraid of going against the grain. And I feel like this campaign continues to prove why Nike is basically the leader of the world when it comes to sports apparel i mean yeah but you also have to know this isn't this isn't a risk for nike you're talking about a company who their main their main base is african-americans like uh like no about, i would i would definitely go back because everybody buys nikes the main demographic everybody buys nikes the main demographic nikes is are not a big part of the african-american community it's a big part of the sports community which we run yeah, but at the same time, like there is also like tennis. There's Nike Golf. There's uh, they do a lot of things. So I don't want to say like African Americans are the main buyers of Nike because uh, I don't know if we are. Uh, we probably could. We could be up there, but um, our buying power is up there with Nike. But I wouldn't call us their main uh, their main demographic. But um, I don't think it's more. It's more so that Nike is betting on African Americans supporting. It's just that they're betting in this type of climate and they're looking at legacy and they're looking at history and they're figuring out that if we're on the right side of history, that we'll be, we'll be more successful in the long run. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. What's up? Uh, oh yeah. So yeah. Uh, first of all, yeah. Uh, Rest in peace to uh, musician uh, Mac Miller. He uh, passed away from an overdose over last weekend. And uh, I don't know about you, Morgan, but that kind of like really messed me up because um, I don't want to say like I grew up with Mac Miller, but if it just seemed like 
it seemed like he was always just like there. He was always out releasing music. And as like as I grew in my life, he grew as well. And so like he always was just like that chill person. Uh, I had a few interactions with him, and it was just like it was always love when I saw him. Um, just like he was a real cool dude, real down to earth. Um, and he never. And it's just like it kind of sucks because like you never want to be like selfish when it comes to death. But it's just like yo, like he really left too soon, like. He made an amazing impact in this short amount of time here. He died when he was 26. And so me at 27, it's like seeing what Mac, seeing everything that Mac did in this short amount of time, it's like, whoa, he had such a strong influence and seeing like the impact that he had on people. It's just like, wow, he was a really good dude. Yeah. And hopefully, like, hopefully this triggers change in like the music industry because because drugs have always been a problem there, but I'm hoping we're coming around to now when people like notice and like like I saw um, one tweet from I think it was like J Cole where he was like, hey, if you in the industry, if you in the music industry and you're having drug problems, like hit me up, like, cause I it it's becoming, I'm not to say to be selfish, but like the fact that so many of our greatest artists. Are Odin are like in trouble with drugs, like Demi Lovato, like Miller, like Michael Jackson, like Aretha Franklin. We need to do something to change the culture of this industry so that we don't lose as many of our artists due to drugs. And not just artists, but like everyday people. Um, and it's like I know it's like hard for me. It's hard for me not to be selfish, but it's just like. Where was the support in the 90s and the 80s when uh, crack and cocaine was, like, running through black communities? And, like, it's cool now that it's happening. But now that it's happening, I want – when, uh, when like, a person of color is going through those type of situations, I want the same sympathy for them as uh, we gave to these white people. Um, but, yeah, uh, yeah, once again, rest in peace to Mac Miller. I've been bumping up uh, Blue Side Park and his uh, latest album, which is uh, really good. Um, for something somber, to basically, I don't know, Henry Henry Cavell might just be a genius. Cavill. Cavill, my bad. But he just might be a genius. Um, so there were murmurs about Cavill not coming back as Superman, like way back, like way after like Justice League. And you know, you know how rumors are. We just like brush it off, blah 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 blah. But recently, uh, THR came out and was like, Cavill's leaving. WB and uh, the two sides couldn't uh, come together for a contract because over an upcoming cameo in uh, Shazam. And really, I think, I think maybe Cavell was trying to drive his price up for Warner Bros. Like, oh, y'all think, uh, y'all think y'all can do this without me? Let's see how the public feels. And the public was pretty upset that he may not be coming back. But it came out today, TMZ said, yeah, it was all a it was all like a basically a hoax. Yeah. I mean but it did for a couple of hours we got to see what it would be like and people talked about different things that might happen if he were to leave. I think one of my favorite was that uh there was this weird speculation that Michael B. Jordan would take his place. And you could almost feel the MAGA people just getting angry at the ideal of a black man playing Superman in any way. Yeah, and that's pretty, uh, it's crazy because Superman is an alien. And if just like looking at Superman's powers, like he gets he, he gets his powers from the sun. He, should, he shouldn't be white. Like <laughs> he should be black. Like that makes no sense. Yeah, it, it's definitely an interesting story to say the least. Yeah, well, hopefully uh, Cavill will be in Shazam and for the future. Also, another note real quick. Uh, DC Universe launched today. Uh, today is Friday, so it's Batman Day. No, Batman Day is tomorrow. Yeah, the Batman Day is tomorrow or today. I forgot which one. But DC Universe launched today. That's DC's um, streaming platform. It has a few comics, a few, a few back shows, uh, Young Justice is on there. I'm waiting until uh, Titans comes out so I can uh, purchase it. Uh, will you be checking it out, Morgan? 
If they put Young Justice on there, I have to. I just, I have yeah, to. It's all, that it, show was so good. It's already on there. Uh, the first two seasons, you can check it out. Uh, DC oh, Universe. Just, DC. Just the first two seasons? Okay. Okay. Yeah. When season three comes out, I have to. But, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, leaving the living room, we're cooking up in the kitchen. And uh, I'm just. I'm kind of over like Nicki Minaj for the year. Like, if she, if she just like went on vacation for like the remainder of 2018, that'd be great. But her stock is at an all-time high. She has, um, she has the highest rating uh, radio show on Apple Music. Um, but her and Cardi B um, got into an altercation at New York Fashion Week. I'm sure. I'm sure you heard it already. Uh, Cardi B threw a shoe and it didn't hit Nikki. But um, what was my concern was that Nikki went on her show and she basically said Cardi is suffering from postpartum depression and pa- payola and she's playing the victim role. And um, you don't just like as just like as a person who has been around a young parents. Not young, you know, like people who have recently had kids. It's like you don't say, you don't just go out and assume that a person is going through something like that just because you've heard murmurs about it. What they do is their business. And so Nikki said uh, she doesn't talk about people's kids, but she went on and said, like, yo, she's suffering from postpartum depression, which is like, I feel like that's officially like when you cross the line, that's how you cross the line right there. Yeah, but. It's working for her. Like every, every day I wake up, I look, I open Twitter, and Queen Radio is like the third thing trending on there. Like the problem with this fight is, as bad as it, like as annoying and as drama filled as it is, it's working in favor of both of their careers. Yeah, and um, you know, it was um, there were a lot of like blavity blacks who said, "Oh wow, now these white people will never let us in New York Fashion Week," and. It, that kind of like stung because it's like okay, it's cool to be unapologetically black until you're around white people, and that's just something that I've noticed just as a person, just like growing up in like just, just like you know how we grow, just like going to like black schools and white schools and seeing how like the two interact and how like black people always like to pop off until like a white person shows up, and it's like where was that? Where was that same energy? When the when Caucasians weren't around, it's like you have to be the you have to be authentic twenty four seven. And I know that's like super hard for some people, but it's just like you can't like. I feel like if somebody like the situation was Nikki may have liked the tweet talking about uh, Cardi's kid culture, and it's just like you like that. I feel like if somebody talks about your kid, like that's a line that shouldn't be crossed, and it doesn't matter where you do it at. And I've I've heard a lot of uh, commentary about this. People are like, she's ruining her bag. Cardi's ruining her bag. We loved her when she's authentic. She has to even the way she's like different now. And although she is different, and her platform has completely magnified since when she first came on the scene, it's just like there's certain things that you just have to stand up for. Like if she, it's like if she would not have checked Nikki at New York Fashion Week, then. That would have gave Nikki license to do it more and more. And it's just like when you stand up and you're like, yo, this can't happen. This can't go on. Like you talked about my kid. Like I completely agree with that. And the people who are saying, oh, man, Nikki, uh, Cardi's messing up her bag. Um, shortly after that altercation, Tom Ford dropped uh, the new uh, Cardi B lipstick. So it's just like she's not messing up her brand if she's being authentic. Yeah, definitely. Keep it real, y'all. Keep that energy. And in unsurprising news, Fox tries to smear the name of an African American, well, not African, of a black man. So uh, let me this, see. This so, is just this is just the most frustrating story. Yes. Yeah, For so, those of you guys who don't know, uh, a black man was killed in his apartment by a white female officer who walked into his apartment because she thought it was hers. Then, when she saw him there, she shot him dead, which basically might as well just be a metaphor for what white people have been doing the past hundred years. 
Why and, a place is not yours, claim it is, then kill everybody there. That's just basically what they do. Yeah, and, and um, so Fox put out a tweet that said, search warrant, marijuana found in bottom Jane's apartment after deadly shooting. And so just the way that they worded it, they're just the way that they worded it, worded it, they called it a deadly shooting. No, it was murder. It was cold blood murder. And so there was a rumor floating around that the officer dated uh, Jean and like Jean was cheating on uh, the officer, one of her friends, which is why she tried to break in and she shot him. Well, we're not really going to entertain that because that's rumors. But if that is true, that's very unfortunate and um, very uh, sorry. Like, And it's just like, this happens like over and over and over again. And it's just like, it's just a sad cycle that's going to continue. Yeah, it is sad. It's sad. It's frustrating. And the fact that Fox News just tries to defend it, just like, oh, he was doing drugs. He he deserved, like, that doesn't mean you get to kill him. Just because he had some marijuana that justifies the fact that you killed an unarmed man. It's just upsetting. And the crazy thing is, Elon Musk was just smoking in front of millions. And they, like, halted him as this, like, rebel, as this, like, guy who's, like, not afraid to, to be who he is. And even though it's, like, his first time, but he's still doing it. He's still, like, proving that you can be a CEO but also be cool. And it's just, like, where where well, does – well? it's just, like, case, where does the sympathy – I don't want to say sympathy, but it's just, like, when does common sense cook in for racism? Because at a certain point, a common sense should overrule prejudice and racism. Yeah, but what I will say with the Tesla thing with Elon Musk is after he did smoke weed, his stocks did drop. Like there, there are some people out there. When you say I did weed, they just get upset. One of well, my uh, and uh, one of yeah, one of, <laughs> oh go ahead to tell to tell a short story. One of my uh, one of the people I watch, Rooster Teeth, a man by the name of Bernie Burns. Shout out to Rooster Teeth and Bernie Burns. Uh, they um. He used to have a vlog series. He spent a whole year vlogging every week. And in one of his vlogs, he went to uh, California and he went to this, like, and he went to the vineyards and he went to this, like, marijuana, like, dinner thing. Like, kind of bougie, like, white people bougie stuff. And he even said on podcast later that there were some people who said, oh, you guys are doing drug content now i'm done i'm not watching you guys anymore just because and he didn't even show them like smoking in the video they just knew it was there and in their head they go oh drugs and they're done with it and it's it's ridiculous and it's childish yeah but my bad rest in peace to gene john however sorry for his family to go through this all right so we cooked up in the kitchen Let's eat in the dining room. And uh, I'm going to let you take this uh, since you're still in school. Uh, talk about uh, violence in schools. So there's just been a couple of crazy stories going around uh, in around education in schools and, like, gun incidents. The first one is a little boy in uh, – let me see. Uh, I think it's, like uh, – Let's see. Detroit. He went to Metro Detroit High School. Um, he stabbed one, a female classmate. I think I think they might have been involved somehow, but like he stabbed his female classmate. And I, I I think she died. And then also uh, to keep it keep it rolling with even more crazy stuff. There was um, an altercation where a student had brought a gun to school and uh, he stood up in class, told his whole class to get down with the gun and then pointed at his teacher and fired. Luckily, he had the safety on and it didn't go off and the teacher was able to like wrestle him down. But at this point, it is very crazy. The amount of violence that's happening in our schools is ridiculous. And as someone who's studying to be a teacher, it's kind of disheartening. Like, am I going to have to wake up one day and stop one of my students from shooting people? That's just, it's just the sad reality that we live in now. Um, Because we've been growing up with it our whole lives. Like, Columbine happened on my birthday. 
Um, and it's just like, and it's getting increasingly worse just because like, it's just like the type of climate that we're in. People feel more emboldened to act out on their feelings than ever before because they know that there's going to be no repercussions for their actions. Yeah, it, it's sad. It's sad. And from one school violence to another, um, Georgia just sent home a letter that uh, asking parents if they would allow for uh, spanking and uh, corporal, well, not corporal, but like uh, physical punishment in schools. And I think it was like one third of parents signed the paper saying it was okay for them to hit their child. And that to me, it's disrespectful and it's also it's dangerous because like I know we grew up in and in the black community it's very much seen that spanking is just a natural thing when raising a child like the old saying spoil the rod uh, spare the rod spoil the child but one of the things like if you study psychology and the psychology of punishment one of the things you learn is that punishing punishment physically is a very dangerous way of teaching your student or your child to control their behavior. It's a very dangerous thing because children learn even when you don't want them to learn. So they might learn the lesson that, oh, I wasn't supposed to do this, I wasn't supposed to do that. But if you do it, if you do it with too much anger, if you don't have the right facial expression, if you don't explain them why you're doing it, you can just as easily just teach your child to be abusive and to be and to fix your problems with violence, which leads to students stabbing their classmates or picking up a gun and shooting people. And so to just give it to, and to just sign away and say, yeah, you can totally hit my child. I trust you to do that without any any training or any ideals, just like, oh, that old homegrown Southern values. It's a dangerous, it's, it's, it's playing with fire and I'm not sure I'm okay with it. And also like, you already know who are the students that are going to be dealing with this the most. It isn't going to be, it isn't going to be, um, it isn't going to be certain kids. It's going to be the kids that need to be made an example of. And there are going to be teachers who are going to uh, take it too far. Uh, we've uh, we've seen that um, at my high school. There was um, there was a teacher who openly brought their gun to school like every day. Like it wasn't. It was just like an open fact that they brought their gun to school every day. And it was just like, okay, I brought my gun, but you guys aren't going to stop me. And if you do, uh, blah, 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 blah. And so it's just like, that just says, sets a dangerous precedent because it's only going to be certain kids feeling this, uh, getting the consequences of this of this action. Yeah, and it's just not effective. I know people like, like to do it, but it's just, it's not effective. So uh, final story before the grand opening, grand closing. Uh, did you hear about what happened to Dr. Disrespect? Nah, what happened? So for those of you guys who don't know, Dr. Disrespect is a super popular uh, streamer on Twitch. Shout out to Dr. Disrespect. He even got an award for being uh, the top streamer last year at the Game Awards. And he his house was shot up in the middle of uh, him streaming Call of Duty Black Ops Beta. They shot at the top uh, level of his house. Uh, Thankfully, um, nobody was hurt. But he did say that um, this was the second time it happened that week. He contacted the police. And it just, it brings into account, like, this massive amount. A lot of streamers are scared for their safety. And it's, because there are things like you have, uh, there's uh, swatting that can happen, and it's so easy for people to find out where you live. And unlike YouTubers where they're making videos and they're doing things like that, streamers, because it's live, because people can see it, because of their personality, it seems to almost grow this inerrant nature of people to just be just jerks and trolls to them and endanger their lifestyle. And it's not okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not. It's uh, yeah, it's just too far. Way too far. So uh, hopefully it gets better. Hopefully that person is put in jail where they belong. Uh, but uh, you got the grand opening, grand closing. All right, grand opening, grand closing. Um, 
Brett Kavanaugh is basically uh, he's going to be not he's going to be appointed to the Supreme Court. Um, I don't make sure you are calling your uh, representatives and your senators saying, hey, uh, this guy does not represent who America is just because um, there's been a lot of talk about him getting rid of Roe versus Wade. But um, if you look closer at his record, it. It just like he has a record of going against um, he's going he's always for corporations and he's never for the people. And he also uh, believes in the getting the continued getting of the uh, Voting Rights Act. So not only will um, legal abortion be gone, but um, the Voting Rights Act, as we know it, is, is going to be gone as well, because it's already been gutted and it's already been it's already been gutted to the fact where um, certain states have like basically roadblocks in place where that people of color cannot be able to vote. And they have to, um, I don't know if you heard the story. I can't forget this. Uh, I forgot the uh, man's name, but um, he was an older black gentleman and uh, he moved to Wisconsin from uh, Chicago. And he had to go back and forth to Chicago like three times from Wisconsin to get like his birth certificate, his social security card. Um, It was like a whole lot of things that he needed. And at the end, he just threw his hands up like, yo, forget it. This is crazy. And so it's just like we're going to be seeing more situations like that. And if, for example, he did take that against the court, uh, Kavanaugh would uh, say, no, you uh, you should have done all this stuff. I'm not for this. And um, and it's not just um, and I feel like people are failing to realize how um, how deep politics goes, because um, the Supreme Court isn't just for our lives like. Let's just say, like, God willing, I live 30 more years, 30 to 40 more years. Or if I have, like, children or grandchildren, they're going to be dealing with the consequences of what's happening, of what I'm doing right now. So, like, let's say, like, I don't vote and I'm just like, yo, forget it. Midterms don't matter. And uh, I don't vote. But Kavanaugh gets on. It's just like my my children and their children will have to deal with this with the. um very right leaning Supreme Court for the most of their lives and my grandchildren's lives. So it's just like it sets a very dangerous precedent. Uh, make sure um, you get out to vote already. I got my email uh, asking about my uh, mail in ballot. So uh, you have until September 17th in Colorado. I'm not sure what it is in other states, but if you're in the Colorado area, make sure that you are um, up to date with your register to vote. And get on the vote. Um, it's a mail-in ballot. You don't have to do it right away. Um, but make sure you get it in. Just because this is the most important election of our lifetime. And I feel like many are not grasping the consequences of what's going to happen if um, if the House isn't uh, flipped back to being Democratic. Just because... Um, but I don't want to be like rude about people's like political views. But it's just like... The GOP are crazy, and it's just like they are literally like insane. And you see who's at the top of their party. Uh, we're not gonna get into much, but it's just like you see the actions of them, and it's just like, as a person of color, it's just like, how can you sit there and think that Jeff Flake or Paul Ryan or Mitch McConnell or Mike Pence has has your best interests at heart? Like you think they really care about gentrification? They think they really care about clean energy because they don't. And it's just like the importance of this election is very. It's basically like it's basically there was a campaign that Diddy had in like two thousand and eight. It was called the Voter Die campaign, and that's more relevant now than it was in two thousand and eight. Just because in two thousand eight we're all hoping change, but this upcoming election is for the survival of U.S. democracy because I fear that if we don't get out and vote in this midterm election, the U.S. democracy, since it's already fragile, is going to go away. And um, that was it. I just want to say um, thank you to my co-host Morgan for uh, yep. taking time out of his schedule. This is on a Friday. We wanted to uh, record before the hurricane hit in case his power went out. So Appreciate you for that, Brody. Um, if you're listening, thank you uh, once again. Like, comment, subscribe on uh, YouTube. We're on Google Play. We're on um, Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. And now we are officially on Audio Map. We have a few uh, episodes on there. So 
Check us out, uh, 26 and Glencoe. Follow me on all social media platforms at One Marcus Flowers. And you can follow me at, at MetroMeta2648 on Twitter. Yeah, and so we have a few things coming down the pipe uh, just content-wise in this, this next week. Um, of course, we have another Dust Off the Cartridge podcast. Uh, we have another Super, this super Flow Blows. We have a Metro Meta podcast, and we have a, a Fantastic Flow podcast. So make sure you keep it locked. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, we really appreciate it. Peace.